Republicans cry foul. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. I'm talking about Rhode Island Republicans who have filed a complaint with the State Ethics Commission uh, regarding the IGT Twin River Governor Raimondo, IGT's lobbyist, former chairman Saga. Are you following that or are you just trying to hold on to the humidity and the summertime and all of that kind of a thing? We really have quite an interesting story going on here regarding who controls at least the operating mechanisms for our gaming in this state. And it's a billion dollar controversy. The Republicans have weighed in and the chairman of the party, Susanke, is here, and we're gonna get right into it on this Thursday evening. Great to have you in. We're gonna kinda skip everything else. You may see the show uh, another time. We have, not tomorrow night, tomorrow night will be a brand new show with Attorney General uh, Peter Narona on what's happening at the Wyatt and a couple of other things. But then we're gonna take a little production break for about a week and a half, so you may see some of the shows that we've recently produced again. If you're seeing them again, you, well, you figure that out. Uh, here's the headline that kind of spawned the entire deal, right? Deal revealed to keep gaming giant IGT in Rhode Island through that late date, another 20 years, right? Because their deal doesn't expire until 2023, the current deal. The governor has tried to pull that off, and this is why she says Twin River, who is now wanting in on this conversation, really shouldn't be. This isn't the business they're in, and this is the third biggest source of revenue for Rhode Island. I think it would be incredibly risky to turn over this to a business that has zero track record in it. And so what's happening here is that IGT, which has long been the uh, operator of the lottery systems and supplying the bulk of the VLTs, um, the slots as you would call them at Twin River, but they're really push-button VLTs, uh, they're looking for an extension. Now, it used to be GTEC, now they're IGT, and now that they're IGT, they're an international company. And IGT says that they've got some significant pressure on them to build a 20-year forecast, and they need a few years to know whether or not they're going to continue in the same vein. The deal they have right now is an economic development deal that they put together with Governor Kacheri back in 2003. And amongst the things that it provided was a guarantee from IGT to put in a th to keep a thousand jobs here. Now remember, IGT is the world leader in this technology, and those jobs service the world, not Rhode Island. Their actual workforce, reportedly, for Rhode Island to actually maintain the lottery system and the VLT system here is about 60 people. So. They say that they have options and perhaps some economic pressure to find another place to do business and leave their beautiful downtown headquarters, which reportedly are pretty expensive. So Governor Raimondo tries to put a deal together, and she does so administratively and quietly. Some would say secretly. I'm not sure that's fair. The GOP certainly is going to say that, and our chairman will talk about that in a second. And they filed this complaint. Uh, against them. But before we even go, uh, put, if we can just put that down for a second, Eric, I just, wanted, I just wanted to point out that the conflict here is that Twin River, now its hedge fund holding company, is looking for more profit. One could say that's, I don't know if it's good or bad, it's just, it's what it is, looking for more profit. And what they're trying to do is to cut into GTEC's profit with the machines. They once, a few months ago, actually met with GTEC, with IGT, to see if they could partner on this whole deal, actually get a little bit of their cut and kind of stay away from what has happened, which is their claim that they ought to be able to bid on this technology. Twin River is a hospitality company, like the governor says. If they got into this game and bid to run the lottery machines and or the VLT machines, they would most likely have to sub out to another company. There are only two other companies in the world that do this kind of work. IGT might end up being their partner. Now do the math. If IGT ends up being their partner, they're just getting a bigger cut of what IGT does. Do you follow that? So, you know, this notion that there ought to be a bidding process you know, I, 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 ask Twin River if they're ready to bid their end of the deal. They're looking for a no-bid extension at the same length. 
to be the hospitality, the host, the commissioned salesperson, if you will, of the, of the VLTs at both Twin River and Tiverton. So that's a little bit of a backdrop. Thus comes this headline. Let me put it up again one more time. Thank you, Eric. GOP files ethics complaint against Ramondo in casino spat because of X number of reasons that I will let the chairperson alliterate. Sue, welcome. Nice Thank to have you. you. Thanks for having me on, Dan. Um, any quarrel with my layout, by the way? <laughs> Just in terms of the facts of the case. I'm not going to quarrel with you, no. Uh, what I'm going to say is, yes, we filed an ethics complaint against the governor for two reasons. One, because we believe that her and Don Schweitzer, it, who is um, both of them officers in the Democratic Governors Association, the DGA, they are both officers. And because they are both officers, they are considered business associates. When you're business associates, there are certain, certain things in our ethics law that you have to abide by. And our complaint is they didn't. Okay, well, let's, let's slow it down because I didn't, I didn't enter in that part of the story. So. Its former chairman, IGT's former chairman, Don Schweitzer, has long been a political player and has been involved in this Democratic Governors Association, which is a national organization that Governor Armando has now risen to the president of. Right. Um, um, for, it's a revolving thing. But she's a player now nationally in what's called the DGA, the Democratic Governors Association. Schweitzer is also still on the payroll at IGT as a lobbyist, a lobbyist to do the influence work for IGT, you know, to make sure he knows where the bodies are buried. And by the way, not for nothing, if you are a lobbyist or a public relations person working in government and you are not being employed right now either by Twin River or IGT, the joke is you really stink at your job because they have, they have, they, it's been a, a feeding frenzy mm -hmm. of, of lobby legal PR work and frankly, it's really kind of like one of those old scrimmages that we used to play in, in, in the gym, whose shirts and whose skins, and then next week you're on different teams. It is as mercenary and cash-oriented and, and philosophically empty as anything I've ever seen. Right. Do you agree with me? Absolutely. Yeah, it's just incredible. It, it goes to how important these contracts are. It's money. Because there's a lot of money involved. A lot of money. So lot follow of money. the money. Yeah. We say follow the money. So okay, so, so that lays out... This personnel, this Mr. Schweitzer, is active in the Democratic Governors Association, has been for a long time, and you're suggesting exactly what? So that there's an ethics violation. The reason why we have an ethics code is we expect our public officials and people that do business to actually follow the ethics code. And we've had great success with that, the Republican Party. Um, we filed complaints against the Speaker Mattiello, uh, Dan McKee, Carnavalli, Lally. We've won these cases. Um, we're the opposition party, and this is what the opposition party should do. Hold people accountable. Um, we're not saying that they're bad people, but good people sometimes do the wrong thing. So we are the opposition party, and we are going to try to hold these people accountable. And what the Ethics Commission uh, found when they met, we had two separate uh, complaints. One was about that they're business associates and that should have sent off bells and alarm whistles. And the second was we said it should have gone out to bid because Don Schweitzer, we believe, holds more than $5,000 in IGT stock. Now, we didn't tie that in a bow for the Ethics Commission. We could not prove that he had $5,000 and that's what would have set off a bidding process. So the Ethics Commission said, no, you don't have to go out to bid, but yes, we're going to investigate. So we're going to wait until the investigation is right, done well, by but the this, Ethics this, Commission. This, this whole technicality on setting off a bidding process is, is uh, we can get into the weeds on this complaint, but we'll talk about the bidding process in general because a lot of folks in your party, not just tied to the ethics complaint, argue that there ought to be a bidding process for an open and transparent governmental decision, right? You believe that to be true? Well, I believe that we need to have good government. And how do you get good government is one of the reasons is you do go out to bid. Now, I'm, I have been looking at other states because I said, I, are we an outlier? Is a 20-year contract out of the norm? And I'm finding, yes, that's out of the norm. I looked at New York State, who IGT does have a gaming uh, contract with uh, the state of New York. They go out to bid. I go out to bid. It seems our governor really likes Andrew Cuomo and a lot of things that they do in New York. 
we do here in Rhode Island? Well, they went out to bid, and IGT has their contract. And you're right, there aren't a lot of gaming companies, but they do go out to bid. We want to make sure that this, the residents in Rhode Island right. have the best okay, well, possible we'll, contract. We'll dig into that part in, in, in two segments from now. Right now, when we come back, we'll talk specifically about this ethics charge against the governor. Stay with us. So she is the target of this Ethics Commission a complaint by the GOP, and the Ethics Commission did take this complaint for its investigation, meaning they did not, they did not dismiss it out of hand. Uh, gosh knows what the timetable will be for their decision. Did they give an indication on Tuesday? Um, typically what they say is they have about six months. You know, I, I always say give them up to 18 months because they will investigate, and we're going to allow yeah, them to I do think their I think they'll accelerate this one. I, yeah. I, I think not because you guys have indicated that you would like the General Assembly to suspend its thought process or decision at least on this IGT Twin River issue. Uh, you've asked the General Assembly not to vote until this thing is adjudicated at the Ethics Commission. I'm not sure that they need to, to, to sit and wait for, for your action on this. But lay out one more time for everybody why you think the governor is an ethics problem here. So, um, because the governor is president of the DGA, the Democratic Governors Association, and Don Schweitzer is the treasurer, they are both officers in this organization. According to the ethics code, they are considered business associates. And if one or more of them uh, receives a financial gain from that partnership, it should set off bells and whistles. Well, who's, so, who's, who is paid in the DGA? The governor is a volunteer leader. So, but they're raising money. It's a financial gain, and he will gain money because he's a lobbyist for IGT. So it's a little, not convoluted. He's not gaining. There's no money. That there's no. There's no revenue earnings benefit for any either one of them in their roles in the Democratic government. But they're raising money for an organization. They are raising money to get Democratic governors but, but, elected. But what, what about... So what, that's, that's a game. That doesn't have any... It has nothing, no impact. This deal has no impact on that activity. Zero. But they're business associates and according to the, the Ethics Commission, just follow the ethics code. Follow it. And that's what we want them to do. Mm -hmm. And we're going to allow the Ethics Commission to investigate yeah. what we put forward. I don't think we're you got a prayer. We're going to allow them to do the job. I don't think you got a prayer. And we'll see. We'll see. I think, I think Schweitzer has a little bit of a challenge because he's on the IGT payroll as a lobbyist. Uh, and he has a relationship with the governor in the DGA. But the long, long term relationship that he's had with the DGA probably stands on its own. His, his separate lobby work and being former chairman, there was no negotiation with Schweitzer and the governor on this deal. That deal was good. The Schweitzer's long gone. Uh, and, you know, Bob Vincent and his team, the new chairman of IGT, were the negotiators for IGT. So I don't, I, I, I don't see the connection. But one of the. Uh one of the things that we put in our complaint go, speaks directly to this. The governor had a chief of staff, and he had a relationship with someone with, that would, from DraftKings that was doing online gaming. He actually went to the Ethics Commission and asked for an advisory opinion. This is what the governor should have done. Well, what, what, what was the advisory opinion The response? advisory opinion is you need to recuse yourself from any anything to do with this online gaming. Well, but the so governor doesn't have a spouse involved. No, I know she doesn't have a spouse, but it's a business associate, and that's mm -hmm. what the Ethics Commission well, found. Well, it's not Dan, a, it's Dan, not we're going to disagree listen, on it's, this. Not, it's not a business association in the sense that they're together running a business. They're part of an association. That's Neither right. Neither one of them generate any revenue for that association. The IGT deal has been around for nearly now two decades. The governor is trying to sustain a deal that exists and primarily the reason that she's trying to do so is that she's trying to do two things. One, sustain the technological expertise, because if you think the Republicans and everybody else uh, cried foul when the you hip computer barfed, right? Can you imagine what happens here when lottery tickets can't be cashed? Hello, right. we'll fly. That's a big problem. Secondly, there are a thousand jobs at stake. We should talk about that. The governor passed, Governor Kacheri, made this deal with IGT and they're in a new bid situation, primarily because they're a homegrown company that grew to this level to worldwide uh, prominence, and they retain six-figure, or reportedly, six-figure 
uh, 1,000-six-figure 1, average jobs in the state. They're an economic engine for the state. I see the rationale for Kacheri having done that, don't you, good Republican governor? He was a good Republican governor. You like the deal? Well, I like the, the deal. Existing when it, deal. The existing deal as it as it stands now, yeah. sure. Okay. But I don't know what the All new deal is. All she's trying to do is now look. I haven't signed off. I mean, I mean, not that I signed off, <laughs> but as a citizen and a commentator, I haven't signed off specifically on the construct of the deal yet. I think all the pressure that's being put on for transparency is good. I think yep. you need to have a lot more questions answered. You know, we tried to get some answers from Bob Vincent, the chairman, the other night, and uh, we, he was he was cooperative. But you know, there's only so much deep, you know deep dig that you can do. Uh, there are adjustments in these numbers, and there's all sorts of variables that are at play. I think the General Assembly's constitutional role for hearings on this thing are a must for review on this. So. I'm not saying the deal is constructed in some draft, and that's all it is right now, between the governor and IGT, is rock solid. But the principal effort, and by the way, I'm not the one running to the governor's defense all the time around here, so, you know, uh, but the principal effort to retain that which has been an economic status quo here and to maintain the technological excellence that IGT brings makes perfect sense to me. I don't know why. I don't know why you guys have decided to go after her on this flimsy other association with a retired chairman slash lobbyist. It seems like a, it seems like a GOP typical take a whack, throw it against the wall, see if it sticks pot shot. No, I don't think it's a, a typical, and I disagree with your categorization of what the GOP does, because I think that unless the opposition party starts talking about good government, is this good government? Would this deal have just slid right through with nobody looking at it? We are highlighting what we believe So there's is, a major controversy yeah. going on right now between Twin River and IGT, you know, but would notwithstanding what, what, yeah, what, no, what, what you're doing it, with an ethics complaint. Your ethics complaint has nothing to do with the light that's being shown on this deal because it's controversial because Twin River is looking for a piece of IGT's business. I actually disagree with you. I think we are shining a, a spotlight. Twin River may be shining a different spotlight. But I think without us holding the feet of those people accountable. Who look, people? The, Which the, people? The governor. Um, you look at what we have done in well, the so past. So what are we going to do differently based on this ethics complaint? What the, she might change her mind. She might, you know. Change her mind on what? She might change her mind in how she does business. Uh, you look at all the disasters. What kind of options does she have? What are well, you talking about? Just look at whether or not this is a good deal. Our end goal, the end goal of this is to make sure that the citizens of the state of Rhode Island get the best possible outcome. The best possible outcome that they can. She's the governor. She has the responsibility of constructing a deal and keeping that business alive. Yeah, well, look at some of the other deals that she's entered into, that we guaranteed jobs here. Johnson & Johnson guaranteed jobs here. It never came to fruition. So what's the chance of this actually happening? You're, you're saying, oh, we're going to keep 1,000. G-Tech is, G -Tech is, or IGT, has has maintained, nobody's suggesting that they haven't maintained their commitment in the current 20 they year have deal. maintained, but going 20 years So, I mean, that's, that's a, that, that, and, and, and it, it, it could be the subject of uh, quite a legal battle if, in fact, they don't maintain the, the commitment that they, they enter into in, a, in an ensuing contract. It could be. But they, have, they are responsible to their shareholders, and so what are they going to do? Make the best possible deal for their this shareholders? This conversation is going in circles. I, I, I don't think it's going in circles. What do you are, what? Okay. Here, let me ask We're you this. arguing. If the that governor said, Sue, you're right, I'm a big ethics violator, how do I remedy this? What would you want her to do? I want this deal to have open air, make sure that it's the best possible deal, and to stop doing what, things what like air, this. What air? Listen, she, 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 she constructed the deal administratively, no doubt. The politics of the General Assembly and, the, and you know, they, they hate each other, right? So the, the Speaker and the Governor don't get along. Oh, but she's got to dump the whole thing on the General Assembly, and they have to do their due diligence they hearings. Have to. Well, and what that's else what, do you want? Yeah, that's what we want. We want that But that's that going to happen, happen without your complaints. No, it's not going to happen without our complaints. It was all established that it was going to happen in the fall without your complaints. I disagree with you. And I also want to hold everybody accountable. Why do we have an ethics law if we're not going to follow it? So we brought this complaint because there's a net. We believe that's that like there's That's like asking why do we have violation. a constitution without challenging it. I don't, I don't no, understand. No, without following the constitution. I'm I'm saying that there was an ethics violation, so follow it. Follow the ethics law. Yeah. There are people in the state here that say, oh, the ethics law is weak. We're saying, no, follow uh, the, the, it. The, the, the ethics commission it. is going to sit here and try to say, they're going to say to themselves, 
Uh, I don't know what the remedy is. We don't. Need, what do we do? Penalize the governor for being the head of the DGA? Penalize the governor for negotiating continuation of an existing state contract? What penalty do you so think the, they're going to? The penalty assert? is they have fines. Just in previous uh, previous ethics commissions. Okay, we're going to find you fines. for being the governor and doing your job, and we're going to find you I'll, for being the head of the doing, DGA. Not doing her job. Not what did you want her to do? If, if from complaint. zero, I know we're running out of time in this segment. What would what did you want her to do that wouldn't have caused an ethics violation? What so did you want her to do? So she should not have done this deal with her business. What we believe is her business associate. He he's got nothing to do with the, the negotiation on. The, but he, they are business associates. She he's is a putting, former chairman. But she is putting legislation forward. She's putting legislation forward, and he's lobbying for it. It's so we brought it forward to the Ethics Commission. Right. We want the Ethics Perhaps Commission to do their job. Perhaps sloppy by IGT on Schweitzer. The governor sure. has no problems here, in my judgment. The, the last word on the bidding when we come back. Stay with us. This is military-grade security. You're issuing a ticket to somebody that could be a bearer bond for a billion dollars with the way lotteries are running right now. It has to be perfect. We've made our reputation and grown this company by providing the integrity and security that lotteries need to do this. If you're going to go out to bid and say, oh, we can do that too, and raise your hand and say, well, we'll bring in people to do that, I just think you first should look at it and say, what's wrong with the system we have now, extending what we have now, keeping the economic development benefits that we get from that agreement, and making sure at the same time that it's a market-driven agreement for the state. Uh, and we only have a minute. That's the chairman of IGT, Bob Vincent, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I, I will tell you that you're not going to be able to get a thousand dollar, a thousand job continuum in a bid process. And that's something that I think you guys have got to be smart about. And, and stop this gratuitous thing that just because bidding is involved, it means that it's good government. Good government is always means transparency. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, the kind of competition. They didn't win a bid last time because Kacheri made an economic development deal. The unique part is that they're housed here versus New York where they're not housed. Yeah, I want you to go back and look at all 50 states and you tell me how many of them go out to bid and there's how many of them don't. So there's only three companies right, in the okay. world that so, exist. So then IGT... If they happen to be here, it was a homegrown business deal with a promise for economic uh, you know, investment along with the business of the state. That's good government, yeah. good strategy. So part of the transparency and part of the General Assembly's job would be to question the parameters of this deal. Well, of course, I know that's they, what should they should question should it, but Absolutely. to demand a bidding process is not necessary. So question then they, yes, so then drive IGT, the deal yes, but yeah. So but IGT has to go out and say we are the only ones that can provide this service because of A, B, and C. Amen. I'll buy into that. All right, I'll well then good. That. Well, at least we resolve that. I bet you you're not going to touch the governor on this. And oh, we already made our bet off the it. air. Huh? Good to see We're going to agree to disagree. Thanks, Chairman. Cheer person. Cheer woman. Final word when we come back. Uh, they don't lay a glove on the governor. Governor's doing her work. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, maybe the lobbyist gets a little whack from the Ethics Commission. Who knows? Uh, but the General Assembly has a big responsibility here for thorough hearings on this very expensive deal. And we'll see where the chips fall. But don't think that a bid process automatically guarantees good government. Not necessarily. The AG on Wyatt and more tomorrow night. See you on the radio at 3 on WPRL. Good night.